Hello, and welcome to the Idle Hands Mix Breakdown. It is me, 16 and Mono, the guy who uh, occasionally makes videos, and the guy who also mixed the newest K-Max single. And we're going to take a look at it. If you're expecting a very uh, confident breakdown and very confidently saying uh, exactly why I did something, you're not going to get it here. Sad to say. So, uh... Do not go into this expecting a masterclass breakdown of every possible thing that was done in this mix because most of the explanation I could possibly give for something is mostly just going to end up being, I thought it sounded good, so I did it. So without further ado, let's get into it. Um, if you haven't heard the full song, uh, there'll be a link hopefully in the description if I'm not too lazy about it, but... Uh, the track, let's just pick a section. I'm just going to pick this section. Let me just... That should be good enough. So we're going to quickly just go in and break it down bit by bit, just kind of show you how I set it up and how... and just kind of show my philosophy on what I did. So we'll just take this section, for instance. So here are the, here are the drums on their own. So... As you can hear, there's a lot of ring on that snare, and uh, that's because I got some additional samples that we can talk about in a second. Uh, one other thing I want to mention is that while I'm monitoring, I do have um, sound sonar works on. So what you're hearing is not going to be exactly correct, but it will be kind of close enough, I think. It shouldn't be that much different. So we'll just hopefully see what we've done here so let's start off i'm not gonna kind of like i said before i'm not gonna go completely in depth on what i did so let's start with the kick real quick so here's the kick on its own that's a kick drum and as you can see i have the contact instrument which is running invasion i have a sample called kick reel and I have a sample called Kick One Shot. Same with the snare. And then there's some additional stuff we'll get into in a second. But the gist of it is that there's... Uh, whoops. Sorry. There's one sample that's a more m realistic kick drum. More multi-sampled and realistic. And then there's one that's like a single sample just firing off over and over. So the real... So here's the Invasion Kick on its own. Here is the real kick on its own. And then here's the one shot on its own. And then you put them all together and you get... Pretty simple. The only really thing going on is that I just have a bit of carving EQ on the invasion kick to start off with. And then I just layered these, balanced the volume. These are exported out, so obviously there's not, um, the levels are set at zero, but that's just because these were exported down just to save on processing. So if we go to the kick and we remove all our plugins, raw, it sounds like this. Process sounds like this. So kind of just bringing out those clicky frequency, or not clicky, but smack frequencies and just kind of making it a bit punchier. So I'm using a plugin here called Big Freak. It's a nice EQ, I like using it. Um, so before that we have, and then after it we have, so just removing some of the more muddy low mids here, boosting a bit of lows here, getting that smacky frequency up near about one to three K. Uh, removing some of the ultra high clicky stuff that peaks out a bit too much up around six, seven K and then a high shelf just to make it a bit brighter and then driving, 
uh, the output to kind of saturate it a bit. And so once again, before, after, okay. So next up we have a uh, big freak or a uh, arouser, sorry, which is the, uh, a distressor emulation. So I'm kind of using it to accentuate the, uh, smack, give it a bit more punch, tighten up the low end a bit more, and then using the mix knob to bring some more of that of that dry signal so I don't completely squash out the low end. So before. And then after. So as you can hear, just kind of gluing it all together, giving it a bit extra punch and smack, but also kind of holding the low end in a bit because it does have some faster double kick stuff that I don't want the low end to get completely out of control on, but I also don't want to completely remove all of that low end bloom. Uh, we have JST clip, a clipper, uh, clipping stuff and heavy music just sounds cool. So I just turned up a knob until it uh, sounded cool. So without it, and then with it, Could I tell you what it's doing? No. Did I like how it sounded? Yes. And then lastly, we got a Fab Filter Saturn 2 and uh, just using it to saturate the kick drum as a whole. Kind of adds some nice weight to it, I think. So again, here's the kick drum with none of that on. And then with everything on, that's a kick drum. My main philosophy is always going to be that you should try to get sounds that are as close to what you want in the final from the start. So that way you don't have to over process something just to make it usable. You should start with something very usable and very close to what you want in the final so that all of your mixing decisions can be more creative and more led by like a vision of what you want it to sound like rather than just trying to get it to work. So next up is the snare. And once again, uh, we'll start with everything individually. I'll go to a place that has a bit more faster snare so we don't have to wait for more snares. So here's the snare from Invasion on its own. Here's the real sample. And then here's the one shot. And then all together. A really high pitched snare, but I also added some weight back in with the real sample and some extra crack and ring with the one shot. So we'll go through these plugins real quick. Again, Big Freak, just uh, adding some additional weight down by the fundamental, adding a bit more like a uh, stick crack up at 3K, and then some additional brightness up here with a shelf and a little bell peak. So before, after. Pretty simple. Uh, we have this uh, Pro Q3, which is again boosting a bit more fundamental and then removing some low mids here, probably for unnecessary muddy frequencies or rings that I didn't particularly like. So before, and then after. And then after that, we have another Distressor plugin. This one is slamming the ever-living piss out of the snare, uh, adding a bit more attack and driving the saturation a little bit. And the reason I'm able to get away with so much compression is because this is sample-based, so I don't have to worry about excessive bleed. If I was worried about bleed from, like, if I was working on real drums, I'd have to kind of uh, get a bit more creative with it. 
and there are ways to get away with as much compression as I'm about to do to this thing in real drums, but it's definitely easier with sample drums. So without and with. So really bringing up the ring of the snare, really kind of punching it out a bit further. Pretty cool. Again, JST Clipper, just fucking slamming the shit out of it, just removing a whole bunch of the peak and just kind of like shaving it off. It also kind of feels like it's bringing the whole snare, the rest of the snare up to the transient level. So instead of it just being like huge transient, nothing else, it's more like transient gets kind of cut off and then the rest of the snare kind of gets brought up to match its level. Next, another EQ, removing some more, uh, just high passing all the stuff that's not needed and removing some more low mids. And lastly, Saturn, saturate some more and even just again, uh, clamp down on those transients on the snare. And as you can see, there's also a little bit of EQ happening. So reducing some mids, adding a tiny bit of treble. So that's the snare. Uh, next up we have, well, I guess, Really quickly, I'll kind of go over these additional samples. I have this thing called Ringy Snare. And what that is, is that's just basically a snare sample with a lot of ring that I found that I uh, compressed very, very heavily to accentuate all the ring and all the noise and then filtered off so it's mostly just ring and then layering that on the snare for bigger moments like the single note uh, breakdown kind of stuff so that way the snare has a bit more attitude a bit more vibe and it kind of cuts through a bit more so without it and then with it so yeah just kind of rings it out a bit more adds a bit more attitude to it and then lastly we have this thing called ambient snare which is uh, just a more room sound, more kind of out there. Just kind of adds more space to the snare. So especially in like bigger moments where like the snare is definitely not as fast, it really adds. And of course, I don't have it on every snare hit. I only put it on the ones where there's a decent enough break. So if I were to solo out the drums and then turn that off. And then put it back in. So it just adds a bit more excitement to everything and a bit more space to the drums, which I think helps them sound a bit more energetic and explosive and expansive in those moments. And then there's just another one of those, but it's in the clean break section, which is deeper and a bit more uh, tail on it. And again, point of that, just to add some more exp like bigness to it. So without it. So it kind of has less excitement and kind of I don't know the word I'm looking for it just makes it sound bigger in this moment uh, next up we have toms and so I'm going to try to find really quickly a space with some toms so let's pick I don't know this section The, the principle for doing toms is usually the same. Uh, removing of this ugly mid-range that toms usually have. And then followed by 
uh, the Eric Valentine thing of using a de- saturation to kind of EQ and shape them. So if I were to take the toms and remove, you know, all of that. And then put it on. Just brightens them up, helps trim the peaks a bit, and just kind of scoops them out, and it helps them sound really nice and big and modern sounding. And that's really all I will usually do for toms. Toms are not a very complicated thing, I feel. Overheads. So before. So what I'm doing is using a channel strip. I'm brightening it up, removing some mids, and then trying to tame the snare in the overheads. Because I do think that the shells in the overhead are an important part to the drum picture. In metal, you usually want to try to use less of it. Uh, symbols can be mostly used for just the symbol information. And the majority of the shell sound is going to come from the close mics. So you just want to try to maximize the amount of overhead uh, symbol stuff and reduce more of the transient peaks of the shells in the overhead. So just brightening it up, removing some of those muds, some of the lows, shelving it out, and then also using a bit of compression to kind of grab the snare when it hits to, again, reduce that transient. Next we have Soothe, which is a great plugin. Basically just removes nasty frequencies uh, very adaptively. It's not a static thing. It will react to the audio that's coming in. So without that... And then after... So it kind of reduces some of the whistly, nasty frequencies. And then last again, we have Saturn, just to stay consistent with everything else. And those are the overheads. Easy stuff. And now we have the room. Uh, important thing to note is that I do have these additional room trigger samples, so without them the rune sounds like this. And then with them sounds like this. Just kind of accentuating the room in the... Uh, exaggerating the kick and snare in the room. So, uh, without that, here's what the room sound like. So it's mostly kick snare. The overheads, uh, the cymbals are not really that present in the room. And that's kind of intentional, so I can get more kick snare tom for the length of the shells and not so much wash out the cymbals. So with processing, a lot of mid reduction because rooms can be a bit nasty in the mid range, a little bit of low end reduction so the kick isn't exactly getting overpowering in the rooms, and then a reduction in the uh, top end where the cymbal stuff lives. So as you can kind of hear, it kind of sounded like everything just kind of got clearer for a moment. And then we have more Soothe, again, trying to tackle the harsher frequencies and the more muddy stuff. On its own, it's kind of not uh, apparent what it's doing, but in the mix or after compression especially, you can kind of tell. 
Speaking of compression, we have uh, the Kramer Pi, my favorite compressor for drum rooms. And uh, it's mostly going to be reacting to the snare transient, but it's going to really help make it really explosive. So as you can hear, that snare really kind of pops and becomes alive when you put the compressor on. And just to really show, if I turn Soothe off now, the drums, the cymbals and muddiness might be a bit more prevalent. So without it... And then with... So as you can hear, like the symbols kind of tucked in a bit more. Next EQ, a bit more lower information removal and trying to pull the symbols down a bit more. So without. Again, just kind of tucking it in a bit more. And then another Saturn, this one is using um, this technique that I don't remember who I saw it from. Uh, it's blanking on me. It might have been Buster from uh, Bill Sharda and Humanity's Last Breath, which is using the mid distortion band to kind of help bring the snare out in the room. So before. And then after. So. After that, we have the drum bus itself, which is just a distressor from Slate, the FG Stress, running at a really high uh, ratio with all these detectors engaged, uh, slowest attack, fastest release, mostly hitting around four to six decibels, gain reduction, and then backed off in parallel, so just adding some more punch behind the drums. And then this uh, preamp, uh, tube preamp, just kind of driving it a bit more. And yeah, it sounded good. So without this stuff. And then with it. And in case you're curious, let's turn all of this stuff off. And here are the drums, uh, completely raw, no processing. So this is what would have been what I started with. And then again, turn everything back on. So as you can hear, it wasn't like drastically different. It's definitely sounded more polished, more produced, a bit more forward and exciting, but it didn't sound like drastically different from what we started with. And that is usually kind of the point. Next up, we got bass. So let's just grab a section and solo the bass out. So that's programmed bass, that's uh, gin bass. I just basically ran his MIDI through uh, gin bass and then exported it as just DI and then split it off into three different tracks, which you can see here. Uh, one's called Dark Glass, one's called Ampeg, and one's called Gross. The Dark Glass one is being run through the Dark Glass uh, Neural Suite. And this is what it sounds like. So that track is providing a lot of the grit, a lot of the note definition, upper mid note definition stuff. Uh, this Ampeg track is going to be providing more of the low end kind of information. And then this gross track, which is just the DI, just distorted and made to sound really gross 
is meant to kind of blend it in with the guitars and kind of unify everything. And especially if I take that gross track out. Sounds fine, but then you add the gross track. This kind of pushes the mid-range of the bass forward a bit, which I think puts it with the guitars pretty nicely. So let's go through the plugins on the bass. We got some sub-reduction, some dynamic EQ up in the main fundamental area of the bass just to kind of keep it under control, especially when it's jumping from lower notes to higher notes. Some low-mid reduction, some undefinable mushy kind of stuff. And then a bit more mid-range, a 400 area kind of reduction to kind of keep it out of the way of the guitars a little bit. So, before. After. So as you can see, that like really tightened it up. Next, we have Big Freak. Again, just clearing up some of the sub stuff, removing some of the uh, more lower mid stuff, adding a bit more uh, upper mid range to kind of push it forward with the guitars, reducing some of that 2K stuff that ding walls kind of bring out when they're distorted. And then a bit of a low pass, but also adding an additional, a bit more brightness. So before. And then after. Now we have a uh, submission audios double tap. So basically you have a compressor side that's dealing with entirely low end. And then you have one that's overall compression. So before. And then after. So really help that low end become a bit more tighter and uniform. Uh, this is just a stock logic channel EQ. This would have been done really quickly as I was mixing and hearing something pop up that I thought was interfering. More sub low end removal and trying to tame some of the base fundamental low end that I felt was getting a bit out of control. And then uh, L1, just pin the bass to a spot so it doesn't move because it doesn't necessarily need to move when you're in a heavy metal track. Just pinning the bass. In other terms of bass, there is a sub that comes in at the clean part, which is just filling out the low end without being, you know, a regular bass guitar. You couldn't hear that. You're probably on your phone. Next, we got the rhythm guitars. Uh, on the track itself, the rhythm guitars, there's a virtual mix rack from Slate that's probably just using like an LA-2A for uh, compression because I think that guitars being run through like LA-2As or 1176s, I think they sound kind of neat. So let's just use the same section. So here's the guitar sound. Uh, these were sent with the tone already printed. There were no DIs, so I was just working with what I was given. And that's going to be kind of consistent with everything else uh, later down the line. So the drums I had freedom with, the bass I had freedom with, most of the guitar layers I had to work with what was given. So here are the raw guitars. So let's go through. First thing I did, I threw on Soothe, uh, just to kind of, I think to me, if I put Soothe on at the start, 
I could identify what about the guitar sound was just these nasty kind of go-to frequencies that guitars usually have issues with. And if I used it at the start, I could identify, okay, what besides this is a problem? So with the bypass... And then with it on. So again, just kind of clearing it up a bit so I could figure out more what it was I wanted to get rid of. Uh, next, we have a Pro-Q3. And then with it on. So dynamic EQ, controlling the lower end, especially when it gets to palm muty sections, really uh, holding it back a bit so the low end doesn't get too out of control. I like having rhythm guitars with more low end uh, beef to it because I feel like I don't like removing all of the low end from rhythm guitars if I can help it. Uh, a bit more mud removal in 300, just uh, where guitars kind of get a bit undefined here and removing some of this can help if your guitars are kind of lacking some definition, but if you remove too much of it, your guitars will lose a lot of definition, so you have to be careful with how much of this you remove. A bit of a mid-range reduction here. This usually comes from amps that are being pushed by like a tube screamer. We usually get some buildup in this area, so whenever I hear this kind of stick out in a mix, I tend to pull it back a little bit, and it kind of helps duck the mid-range a bit more into the mix. 2.4K and a round 4K dip. That's kind of standard for rhythm guitars, especially like distorted rhythm guitars can get nasty up here, especially with uh, certain impulse responses. So just reducing that a bit and then just kind of boosting up some buzz from uh, the top end, just kind of brightening it up to match with everything else. And then reducing some of the extreme highs that were a bit too much. So one more time before. And then after. Uh, if I'm not explaining these well enough, it's going to entirely be because I've been doing this long enough that now I'm at the point where I just kind of know what I want and what to do. And that's not necessarily easy to explain to people. So I am very sorry if I'm not explaining these things well enough. So now we get into these uh, effects. I'll kind of start from the bottom and work my way up because these are really easy to explain and these up here are a bit harder to explain because they're a bit more sound designed and then we'll get into vocals so we have just a bunch of impacts and explosions we have some reverses Another reverse. A long drone. More explosion. More drone and rise. So those are really easy to explain. There's really no processing that's needed for any of these. You just kind of, you balance them and that's all you need to do because they're already pre-processed for the most part. There's stuff like this where this was sound designed from something, I don't remember. I believe it was sound designed from one of these guitar layers up here that we'll get into, but I just took it, distorted it with a bit of automation and then faded it in. The snare reverse is a bit more involved. It's really heavily compressed with reverb and delay so that it kind of has a lot of, it's a bit more destructive sounding. So it's not just a standard snare reverse as well as this track here. That was made from these uh, vocal layers up here. Again, just distorted and reversed and faded in. So let's move back up here. Let's get into these layers. We have this intro swell. This was sent by him. I will, unless specified by me, 
these would have been sent by him already kind of with the sound that they had. I have no idea the origin of that, but that's nothing needed to be done to that sound. Uh, next, we have this lo-fi rhythm break. And, this, and then we got a swell. Pretty simple. Next, we have a lead break is what I titled it. Uh, this is just the lead guitar, reverbed out re lead guitar. which then transitions, transitions into this kind of tremolo guitar. Again, just a little bit of EQ to tighten it up and fit it in with the rest of the mix is all it really needed. We have this other thing that's called random layer, which looks like I just ran it through little radiator, which is like this cool saturation distortion box thing from sound toys. This next one was made by me. I ran some of uh, his vocals through some pedals and then brought it in and then fit it to the grid because it, it kind of made this. I was just running a bunch of stuff through pedals and then just altering settings and seeing what happened. And then it came up with this cool little rhythm, which I'm going to turn up real quick. So it came up with this. So I thought that was kind of cool, so I used micro, micro Shift to make it stereo. So I just kind of spread it out a bit more. This next one I'm going to have to turn this down for because it makes it really loud. I used a plugin called uh, Argent Compressor, uh, made in part by a guy on YouTube called Jeff Plays Guitar. He's uh, been making a lot of Doom uh the video game ost inspired music and he designed this plugin to kind of be like the sound that mick gordon got with a lot of his kind of extreme compression expansion stuff that brought out interesting stuff from his instrument rig so i put that on there and it turned that sound into this So especially that kind of like more metallic sound, it really brought forward, which I thought was kind of cool. And then just a little bit of mid-range reduction, I felt that it was kind of, there was some unnecessary stuff here. Especially with that lead break, I think it sounds really sick. Sounds really cool. And of course, like that's that's something that a lot of people will never even notice, but... It's like you feel it in there and it adds some kind of really cool textures. Next we have the clean guitar break. Again, sent by him. I took that and ran it through uh, more pedals to kind of create this half speed ambient stuff, which I layered underneath it. And I felt it added some nice ambience to the whole section. So it kind of gives this this more pad-like quality than a guitar, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, next we have another uh, clean stuff, which is going to have a very similar thing to the one up here from the heavier section. And if I'm not mistaken, it doesn't really get any heavier. Uh, lead picking is just going to be more of that lead break kind of standard lead guitar layer. 
stuff. Uh, we have this thing called Build Swell. I, this was a track he sent, but I modified it slightly. So it was originally just the low note, the low F note kind of swelling up. What I did was I added a micro shift that spreads it out to stereo and I automated the mix knob. So it kind of goes from stereo and then spreads out as the section builds into the kind of big bridge section. which again, I think adds some nice interest and ear candy to the whole thing. And the next track we have is this uh, pre-break swell, as it's called. It's just another swell track that kind of uh, builds up before the final breakdown. That was another track sent by him. Next is this thing which I called Synthy Business, was sent by him, and it's just this kind of synth break. And then it kind of uses the intro sound from the beginning. Uh, there is a break here because I did uh, cut everything out so that it has like one moment of silence before it gets to the final hit of the breakdown, which I think makes the impact a lot bigger. Uh, next is this section, which is synthy business again, but I ran it again through some pedals and modified it slightly. So I'm actually going to turn it up a bit so you can hear it. Turns out there's volume automation on it, so I'm going to have to turn it up while it's playing. So as you can hear, it's like kind of glitchy, bit crushed. Uh, we run that through the Argent compressor again to uh, just really bring up all those cool bits. Uh, we run it through this delay plugin called Repeater, which I'm using for the spread function here, so it just makes the sound for, go from mono to stereo. Pretty simple. Uh, we have Little Plates, which is just a plate reverb set to a really long decay time, and just washing that sound out a lot. really just making it into a big giant pad and then we got a uh, another pro q3 reducing some of the low end stuff and clearing it up a bit really just clearing that mud up and next we got uh more ambient guitar stuff so Very heavily distorted, very distorted. Just a little radiator is putting in work on that. I think that it's cooler sounding than just having regular guitar drone stuff. I think adding distortion creates a level of interest in it, which is kind of cool. Uh, we have another ambient guitar thing with, again, more little radiators on it. Uh, we have this uh, trem lead, which was from earlier in the song, just in the new section. So that's all the post-production, and then the final part we have to get through is a bit of vocals. So let's start with the main vocal. Important to note is that I'm using this thing called selection-based processing, which allows me to apply plugins directly to the audio file and then ex export them back into the session so it runs through these plugins and then exports 
that result into the track again. So I'm essentially applying a bit of uh, brightness and compression before it even gets to these plugins. So without any of that stuff on, we got a... Uh, a vision obscene, a jaded perspective of what it used to be. Doubt stills the fire in me. So that's just kind of the vocal, where the vocal started. We got a bit of EQ, brightening it up. Uh, some upper mids to help the vocal push through a little bit. Set the stone and build. We got more compression. I just picked this preset on a Pawn Shop Compressor 2 called ScreamVox. Felt appropriate. Sounded cool. So I put it on and left it. So here we go. Parasol Shop Pariah. Set the stone and build the walls higher. Uh, Saturn 2, we're using it to just kind of add a lot of saturation and then blending it in, in parallel, just add more aggression to the vocals. Parasocial pariah, set the stone and build the walls higher. Uh, we got some, just this low shell or this low uh, cut, just high passing unnecessary stuff. Uh, we got a de pull in the S's. Parasocial pariah. Set the stone and build the walls higher. Because you don't want your S's peeking out. And then finally, just limiting, just really pinning the screams because uh, your screamed vocals should just basically be a flat line, no movement. Parasocial pariah. Set the stone and build the walls higher. Uh, we also have these left and right vocal layers. They're treated the same exact way. This exact same treatment. And then we get to the clean vocals, which are up here. Idle hands breaking down till there's nothing left of me. Uh, pretty simple. Again, it's going to be very similar. Melodyne, uh, because vocals were on tune already, but it's just getting that last 10%. Remember, pitch correction and auto-tune are not cheating because your vocals still have to be decent before even getting to this point. You can't fix a bad vocal performance. Um, then we got similar thing. We have another channel strip doing the same exact thing. We have the pawn shop compressor again on the rock vocal setting. I just switched to a different setting and I was like, that sounds cool. Vocals just sound good when they're heavily compressed. That's just the truth. Uh, next, we have uh, Sound Toys Decapitator. Similar principle to the screen vocals with Saturn, but now we're just using a different version of distortion, which is a bit warmer, a bit more down in the lows and the low mids to kind of just add warmth and weight to it. Idle hands breaking down till there's nothing left of me. Uh, high pass to remove the unnecessary lows, but pulling a bit down on the low mids to clear the vocal up, and then some top end addition there. Idle hands breaking down till there's nothing left of me. And then just deesser again, holding back sibilance as it does. Idle hands. And that's the clean vocals. Uh, and then there's this track here. So I took his clean vocal and I ran it through more pedals and I kind of came up with this washy stuff, which sits in the background. I think when it gets into the break section before the final breakdown, that tail really adds some cool uh, ear candy to the entire sound bed that's there. So I think it just really adds some interest to that section. Uh, next, we have these kind of washed out ambient vocals, which were sent processed already, so there's nothing going on on them.
So those were sent processed already. I didn't do anything to those. Those were just how they were sent. I have this uh, vocal background glitch again, which is again running through pedals that I just was automating and messing with while letting stuff record. So it's this vocal line. Which I then ran through the pedal, micro shift and argent compressor. So together it's just cool sounding. Uh, here we have a vocal whisper. Uh, vocal layer. These are these choir sections. Again, nothing needed to be done to those because those were sent already processed. Uh, I guess the last thing we can talk about or last couple things is we have all our reverb and delay over here. Uh, the screams have a very short uh, verb and a little short uh, delay. So not really long. It's mostly just add, meant to add a little bit of space to them so they're not entirely dry but not be this kind of cavernous thing until we get to this last section where I do add in the the secondary reverb and delay, which is more present on the clean vocal, but it's also on the scream to kind of make it bigger. Mind when I never used to believe when they told me that the devil makes work fun. And there's a couple uh, a couple moments where I automate send, so I push the vocals further into the reverb and delay, especially on this last section. I really push the reverb and delay forward a lot. It's for the world to Which is just adding another layer of ear candy stuff and a lot of... Uh, movement and interest to it instead of it just being a static part and that's kind of where a lot of the the cool stuff in your mix will come from is like the attention to detail because you can get a mix kind of sounding good statically but it's that last bit of attention to detail where things really start to make a difference and then all that's really left is we have our master bus stuff here which i have these different buses we have this band bus which has the majority of the the bass, the rhythm guitars, and the drums going through it. It's just with uh, like this preamp, some EQ, and this little bit of extra compression that I added in later parallel to add a bit more punch to the main band section. Uh, we have a vocal bus, which is just going into Saturn and then going into Soothe to tame a lot of the harshness that can build up when you stack vocals on top of each other. And then we have the post-production bus, which is going through this... Uh, Culture Vulture Distortion Box, which I think kind of helps glue a lot of the post-production elements together. Uh, then on the main output for the main out bus, there's a bus compressor, quick attack, quick release, 4 to 1 ratio, mostly ducking when the snare hits in, so mostly it's going like minus 1, minus 2, and every time the snare hits, it usually pushes back to minus four. Uh, another distortion saturation box, uh, black box, HD2MS. This is just a preset I put on and I said, hey, that sounds cool. And now it's just on my template when I open up a new session. And then L2, which I'm using mostly just when I'm monitoring the mix to make sure I'm at a louder level. But when I uh, put it out for mastering, I turn this off and I turn off the sonar work stuff and so that way i don't have a incredibly loud file when i'm doing any kind of mastering and that's really it i don't think i did a great job of explaining it but i tried my best uh again my thing is i'm just working with a lot of experience now so i just know what i want to do it doesn't necessarily make me good at explaining it but i do know what it is i'm trying to do when i'm mixing so hopefully you gained a little bit of insight in how this track was put together and maybe you picked up some stuff from 
these little bits of interest that I sound designed in, and that inspires you to try to make some interesting stuff on your own. So yeah, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, listen to the single on his channel on when, when it's on Spotify and a bunch of other stores. I'm very grateful for the chance to mix this because it's just being able to mix more music is always fun. And that's about it. I'll see you later. Goodbye.